ding dong. The bell gargoyles are dead. I ring the bell. Where next for my lonely undead hero? Traverse the white light. The Capra Demon. The cornerstone of Dark Souls is death. Dying hurls you back to the last bonfire you rested at, losing all progress and dropping all the souls you've acquired at the place of your murder. Die on the way to retrieving those souls and they are gone forever. Souls are money. Souls are memory. Souls are power. They are vital to progression. Dark Souls educates you through this loop of death and rebirth. You die. You die again. You die again. And then, you do not. Through such a cycle, I had finally brought down the Bell Gargoyles, a battle that took place on the relatively large arena of a church rooftop. In contrast, the Capra Demon lives in a narrow alleyway with nowhere to run. And boy, he's pretty fast on his feet. I am brutalized, repeatedly. A slash with my sword didn't seem to do much damage, so I felt my weapon needed a little pick-me-up, at the very least, a cup of coffee. I checked out the literature. A wiki advised me not to fight with anything less than a drake sword. Mm, a, a, a drake sword? Even my friend Steerpike used a drake sword. Okay, fine, let's go find it. Except, well, the drake sword is a tail. The tail of a dragon. Now it's time for ice cream. Or maybe some nuts. This lovely is known as the Hellkite Dragon. I'm a dragon! Rah! But Dark Souls makes it clear that all the dragons were killed at the dawn of the Age of Fire, so the Hellkite Dragon ain't no dragon. What? It looks like a dragon, sounds like a dragon, smells like a dragon, but it's not a dragon, it's a drake. A what? Pay attention, please. I said a drake. But I'm a dragon, Daddy. And now, on with the show. Go anywhere near the Hellkite Dragon, and he will toast the entire walkway. <coughs> there are two ways to cut his tail off, and both require you to irritate him enough to swoop onto the bridge. You can use arrows from afar or go and slash it up when he lands. And it takes time. And it's so, so dull and repetitive. Finally, you amputate the drake's tail and it makes all that boring grind worthwhile. You have the drake's sword and now it is a time to kill. Bring it on! <laughs> now, it's time for ice cream. This is a basilisk. Some people call it a frog because it looks like a frog. But those aren't its eyes. Pay attention, please. Those are its eyes. The Basilisk does something mean. It curses you. While cursed, your health is slashed by 50%. This is terrible because you remain cursed after death. And it's costly for low level players to get it removed. Originally, curses would stack. If you got cursed, while cursed, boom dog, down another 50%. Rinse and repeat. Stacking got patched out, but some players still wax nostalgic for the good old days. They love their punishments. Hurt me, baby. Hurt me some more. And now, on with the show. Ding dong, the Capra demon is dead. With the Drake sword, the demon went down first attempt. 
That was a lot easier than I had expected. Rather... too easy. I wonder if I've made a terrible mistake. Each boss usually results in a training montage. I'm supposed to try and die and try and die until I find the right combat dance moves to take down that boss. That stupid grind on the bridge to the undead parish didn't feel very Dark Souls. This doesn't feel Dark Souls. The victory over the gargoyles was earned. This victory... this just feels... hollow. Oh my god! I've broken Dark Souls! What have I done? I've acquired a super weapon that can wipe out every enemy the game throws at me. Take deep breaths, deep breaths. It turns out the Drake Sword does not scale with the game. As the enemies get meaner, the Drake Sword doesn't mean up to match, and it's a pricey upgrade for this fella. All it does is make a chunk of the early game easy. Later on, Dark Souls will kick my butt again. But I want my Dark Souls back now. So, very calmly, I put away the Drake Sword and pretend it does not exist. Is that a Drake Sword in your pocket? Or are you just pleased to see- I'm pleased to see you. I return to normal weapons, so Dark Souls can hurt me again. To experience the violent grace of its thoughtful design once more. Hurt me, baby. Hurt me some more. And that was how I discovered I had fallen in love with Dark Souls. Traverse the White Light. Preview time. The atom is a collection of shiny balls. The nucleus is composed of blue neutrons and red protons, with green electrons dancing around in orbit. At least, that's what you'd think if you believed everything the pictures told you. Quantum theory made a mockery of this model some time ago, but we still cling on to our balls. In a single human body, there are 7,000 quadrillion atoms, a number so large that the average person develops repetitive strain injury while writing it. So, can you imagine my reaction when I saw a game hyped with the phrase Every Atom Procedural? Ha 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 